Hello everybody. Welcome once again to Talking Pictures. Toy to Otago Settlers Museum has a great collection of painted portraits. More than 50 of them stare down from the top row of the museum's famous portrait gallery. And there are many more elsewhere in the museum. In this episode of Talking Pictures, we're going to take a look at some of these portraits, more specifically, those that have come from the easels of some talented women artists. Dr. Stewart seems to have been a popular subject for portrait artists to paint. At least three of the portraits of Dr. Stewart that we have in the museum's collection are by women who attended the Dunedin School of Art, which was founded by David Conhutton in 1870. This first one is by Joanna Flanagan, who attended the School of Art in the 1870s. She painted this work in 1879. In 1880, when she married William Sibbald, the ceremony was conducted by Dr. Stewart. The Sibbalds moved away from Dunedin, although they did live here again for a few years before the First World War. Joanna donated her painting of Dr. Stewart to the museum in 1911. The second portrait of Dr. Stewart is signed S. Corbett. This is probably Sophia Corbett, who was a student at the Dunedin School of Art in the 1890s. In 1896, Sophia Corbett gained first class passes in her advanced drawing exams. Her painting of Dr. Stewart appears to have remained in the Corbett family until donated to the museum by Francis Corbett in 1946. Another student of the School of Art who gained first class passes in her advanced drawing exams in 1896 was Francis Hodgkins, who was the painter of this third example of a portrait of Dr. Stewart. While the previous two artists don't appear to have continued on to make a career out of painting, Hodgkins of course did, carving out a reputation as an artist in New Zealand and overseas. Our next artist, Mary Park, came to Dunedin with her family in 1864 when she was 13. Like Joanna Flanagan, Mary Park studied at the Dunedin School of Art in the 1870s, and she too painted a portrait of Dr. Stewart. It was said to be one of her best works, but unfortunately, it was later lost in a fire at her brother's house. Mary Park was a daughter of schoolmaster John Brown Park. During her lifetime, Mary painted a number of portraits of her father, including the one on the left here, which was painted in 1883. This work was donated to the museum in 1965 by Agnes Skinner, who was John Brown Park's granddaughter and Mary Park's niece. Mary Park moved to Wellington in the late 1870s and then spent some time in England and Scotland. She returned to Dunedin in the mid 1880s, but went overseas again in 1889 and spent the next two decades studying and working as an artist in France and Scotland. The portrait on the right of the late James Scott of Clarksville near Milton was painted in 1889, when Mary was residing in Paris. It must have been painted from a photograph, as it was executed, or at least completed, two years after James Scott's death. The painting made its way from the Scott family to the museum in 1962, when it was donated by James Scott's granddaughter. Mary Park returned to Dunedin around 1910 and was soon exhibiting at the Otago Art Society. She's believed to have exhibited these portraits of William and Margaret Shand at the Art Society in 1914. They were donated to the museum following the death of William and Margaret's daughter Jeannie in 1937. Mary continued to paint during the First World War, and this portrait of Alexander Stewart, who was headmaster of the Union Street School from 1862 to 1907, may be one that she exhibited at the Art Society in 1916. By the time Mary painted this portrait, she was in her late 60s. She died in October 1920, age 70. Her obituary declared that she had been a woman of fine character who possessed marked literary as well as artistic talent. 
these next two works are by women who both spent time on the staff of the Wellington School of Design in the 1890s, Molly Richardson and Mabel Hill. Molly, or Mary Elizabeth Richardson, later Mrs Molly Tripe, went on to become one of New Zealand's leading portrait painters. Molly's father was a member of the Legislative Council in the 1890s, and this example of her work here on the left shows Anne Holmes, the wife of Matthew Holmes, who was also a member of the Legislative Council. While Molly remained in Wellington, Mabel Hill married printer John McIndoe in 1898 and moved to Dunedin. Mabel Hill mostly resided here for the next 50 years, before moving to England to live near her son, the renowned plastic surgeon Archibald McIndoe. Few of Mabel Hill's works are in public galleries. Toitu's only work, pictured here on the right, was donated in 2019 by Mabel Hill's now late grandson, John Hector McIndoe. And to finish with, we have some works by Sarah Gaynor Clayton. Mrs Clayton originally came from Melbourne, where she had been working as an artist for Stewart & Co for 11 years. She opened a studio here in Campbell's new building opposite First Church in 1900. Although she was only in Dunedin for a few years, she seems to have produced a large number of portraits. This first example of her work, which hangs in the museum's portrait gallery, is of Mrs Christina Chapman, who settled in Dunedin in 1848. The portrait clearly shows Mrs Chapman later in life, and it was presented to the museum immediately following Christina's death in 1910. While the portrait of Mrs Chapman captures her likeness late in life, this pair of portraits seem to record an event early in the lives of James and Catherine Douglas, their wedding day in April 1900. James Douglas was a plumber who would serve as a city councillor during the First World War and become mayor of Dunedin in 1921. Grace Lillian Mitchell, pictured in this 1901 portrait by Sarah Gaynor Clayton, was a daughter of Eliza Mitchell and printer and stationer John Mitchell. She was a great supporter of the Returned Services Association, and when she died on the 3rd of December 1927, she left half her estate, some £21,000, to be used for the benefit of persons impacted by the Great War. This portrait used to hang in the RSA rooms. When Sarah Gaynor Clayton moved to Dunedin in 1900, war was raging in South Africa, and the first portrait she produced here was of the late Sergeant Sam Gawley, the son of Dunedin undertaker and former mayor of Dunedin, Hugh Gawley. Sam Gawley was killed in the battle at Slingersfontein in Northern Cape Colony in January 1900, the first Otago man to be killed in the conflict. In fact, she produced two watercolour portraits of Sam Gawley, one in civilian dress, which was bought by his father, and the other in his soldier's uniform. Other military men of the day, whose likeness was captured by Mrs Clayton, included Septimus Myers, or Septimus Solomon Arthur Wellington Daniel Myers, to give him his full name, whose portrait's pictured here. Myers was a dentist, and well known for his involvement with the volunteer forces, as captain of the North Dunedin Rifles and later lieutenant colonel of the 1st Battalion Otago Rifle Volunteers. And here we have Major Alfred William Robin, or Sir Alfred William Robin, as he would later become, commander of the 1st New Zealand contingent in the South African War, who became something of a national celebrity Sarah Gaynor Clayton also painted a life-size oil portrait of him, which was displayed on patriotic occasions. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of portraits by women artists. See you next time for another episode of Talking Pictures, and thanks for watching.